Welcome back to Fire Emblem Echoes. It's time for Act 5. Hosted by a very angry Alm in the background. Zawardo! Possible Alm is the Emperor's true son, which makes him the rightful successor to the Imperial throne. And he killed his dad, so now he is the, he has succeeded! Since when did you care about effort? I thought you were all about, like, the, the fucking divine right of kings and shit. Well, yeah, that means only kings, uh, can make effort. Only he is allowed to have any accomplishments. If anybody else does a thing, not good enough. How did I get here? What's happening? Heed me, Seymour. Call to me. Accept me unto your soul. That voice, Duma, is it really you? No. I don't actually want to have a conversation, Burkut. Just accept my goddamn power. You did always hate God. Yeah, I hate her local cult, but I hate all more, so... You know, Burkut sucks so much that I just kind of didn't pay attention to any of the scenes the first time I played. I don't understand his character. <laughs> like, it's probably on purpose. It's probably to show, like, the inherent hypocrisy of people who believe in like the divine right of nobility and shit but like what the fuck are you talking about you're you've been proven right yeah but he's uncle's special little boy uh, <laughs> i just wish someone was making the exact arguments i'm making in the game i feel like burkut's whininess does that for you <laughs> Yeah. It would be funny if Fernand was still around. He's just like, Lord Rakut, you've been proven right, though. Om um, could beat you, and he's not a commoner. He's a noble. I feel like we win this argument now. Maybe Burkut's here so that, uh, nobody goes, Hey, wait a sec. Yeah, no, all suddenly being royalty kind of fucks with the plot ever so slightly. <laughs> it was kind of more interesting when, you know, he was just a commoner and leading this whole thing. Uh, as somebody who isn't a knight or royalty or anything. Well, one, this is what happens when you remake an NES game. Uh... Two, I, I feel like the general um, opinion of the people is that nurture is more important than nature. So the fact that Alm was raised as a commoner informs his life situation more than him having, you know. Don't see all the recessive genes. Don't see all the recessive genes. Don't see all the recessive genes. <laughs> That him having DNA from his father. <laughs> Lord Bakut! I'm still on the plot! Oh, he is. Still here. Lord <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I thought Fernand died. <laughs> you doing alright, buddy? Who are you? What have you done to Lady Renea? <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just doing a s sacrifice! <laughs> Alright, Fernand, this seems bad. I think a threesome is no longer on the table. Goodbye! Hold the power of my stand, hot girl summer! I think you mean Girl on Fire. <laughs> Couldn't think of that song because I fucking hate it. <laughs> so that seems bad.
grandfather, what's this door? It it's a door. To the altar beneath Duma Tower. But know that it is a path not easily returned. It's a point of no return, you see. Okay, so real quick, I guess we can talk about Mycin because he is a playable character. Say hello to your backup Gold Knight. So, Mycin here is actually not half bad. Uh, if you really need a unit for this final dungeon, Mycin can fill that role. Uh, he will not be a hindrance to your party, despite the fact that he is a little bit weaker than he was in the prologue. Uh, Despite what Mycin says, he has aged and gotten a little weaker. Except for his resistance, that one's a bit better. I guess when you get old, your skin just gets really resistant to magic or something, who knows. Anyway though, the big drawback to Mycin is that his growth rates are bad. He doesn't have anything over 10% except for his HP, and that's HP. I don't know about anyone else, but like, if a unit's best and really only good stat is HP, that's like the least useful thing you could have out of all stats. <laughs> it helps you to not die, but like, so does defense. Now, considering this is the final dungeon, uh, technically speaking, you might think that uh, low growth rates aren't a huge deal. And well, I mean, look, if you've been using other Cavaliers for longer, they can easily become better than Mycin because they have actual growth rates. But yes, technically speaking, his stats are good enough now that he should be able to survive the final dungeon. But I'm warning you now, uh, there is a post-game. So, there is more than just the final dungeon. You're probably not gonna want to use Mycin long-term because when it comes to actually surviving, in post-game land, uh, you, you kind of need something better than what he's got in order to not bite it immediately. It is worth noting though that like, his abysmal growth rates are better than his abysmal growth rates from the original. Yeah, they were worse, but it mattered less that they were so bad in Gaiden, again because there's no post-game and also the fights are, um, not quite as brutal in the original game as they are here. Now, one last point that is actually worth noting. While Mycin himself doesn't have the most potential, he does have a lot of supports. I mean, he's only got one support conversation. However, in terms of stat giving supports, he can actually just like support with every character from Ram Village, other than Celica. I guess she doesn't count enough. Though oddly enough, he can support with Noma, for reasons. I guess the old men get along, and I would like to see that support conversation. Wish that one existed, but I don't know. I would have thought the person that Mycin actually had a conversation with on screen would have taken priority for bond supports over Noma. <laughs> J just Noma, you know. Noma, that guy that we've barely thought about. But yeah, no, just like Noma is very good at bolstering your initial units from uh, the Priory, Mycin can be pretty good at supporting the Ram Village crew. So if you're using all of them, it's not a bad idea to add Mycin in as well. He gives and receives a lot of bonuses because of that. And since all of them, save for Almond Noma, are villagers and can be any class you want them to be, uh, technically speaking, even if you have all of them fill out your party slots, that's a lot of characters taken, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have a bad bit of variety for the final dungeon. It just means you're kind of shoving the OG deliverance to the side a little bit. But if you don't mind that too much and you really aren't interested in your other gold knights, uh, Mycin's not a bad pick for the end. I did, however, have gold knights that I would prefer to use, so, um... Sorry, Mycin. Hey! Okay, there you go. That's what you're gonna hear about Mycin. Uh, he's not coming with us to the final area. <laughs> <laughs> but his supports! Hey, Messina, you're a character. I ask that you show Lord Burkut compassion. Why? No. He weighed heavy on Emperor Rudolph's mind for many years. The Emperor knew that keeping the boy in ignorance could only bring him pain. He said, yes. boy, this might really fuck him up. 
we trained him wrong on purpose as a joke. So let's see, uh, quote unquote 4D chest uh, his son into killing him and ignored his nephew to the point of insanity. Cool dad we've got here. <laughs> I still think Rudolph fucking sucks. I think Burkut was doomed to turn out poorly. <laughs> He could have been one of two fail sons, but he was the worst one. It leads to the altar beneath Duma Tower, but know that it is a path not easily returned from. Do you get it yet? Did you hear me the first time? It's a point of no return. Rudolph, are you here? It's me, Myson. I've come here as promised. <gasps> Hello, Rudolph, you reasonable fellow, you. It's been too long. Thank you for answering my call. <laughs> you know what I love about you, Rudolph? All of your plans are sensible. I never thought I would set foot on Regalian soil again. Now, pray tell, what was so urgent that you summoned me here? Okay, so I've I've got some pretty good uh, stuff for your face. Got got some pretty good uh, good, good lotions here. Uh, it's gonna keep you looking exactly like that for quite a few years. Yeah, I got a son. Here's Alm and just holds him out by the foot. I don't know how to raise one of these, so can you take them? What? Why? Okay, so, all right, so look, look, we got we got the cult, right? Uh, I don't think they'll like my son. He's got the brand. He's gonna gotta save the world. So pretend he doesn't exist, and later down the line he'll kill me. What? Yeah, no, I'm gonna start a war, and he'll rise up and kill me. What? Also, there's a different child, but that one's not mine. <laughs> I thought maybe I'd have twins and, like, they'd, they'd both kill me, but no, I, I think this one's from a different mom. Then Valentia's end is drawing near. Is Duma's madness to blame? Yes, his time is running short. I see. My sin, I have to draw first blood. I must awaken the people to their potential. Their own strength. And well, Duma hasn't been doing that good enough, so um, I'll I'll be the secondary source of doing that, but also for Zofia too, hopefully. A lot hinges on my assumptions of how things are going to go, but I'm pretty sure everybody will hate me so much they'll want to stab me to death. I still understand. Part of this plan, get Alm um, out of the country because the cult is going to kill him. That part makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> I kind of wish that they had, like, maybe altered Rudolph's plan ever so slightly so that it was more of a if I succeed, I succeed, but if I don't succeed, I want Alm um, to be the one to stop me so that he can succeed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. If it was a, well, we're going to figure this out one way or another, it's going to be me or it's going to be him, and that he's just so old and stubborn that he fights all to the death, rather than cooperating, like, that could be a character flaw. But they're trying to play it as, like, he planned this all out, and it, I'll be honest, at first I thought maybe you were doing, like, a knee-jerk reaction, but no, that that's what they're saying. Mm-hmm. We also have this scene. The, this one's not the, the flashback in the turn wheel. The, this is just what happened to Selka's party after they got dropped into the basement. I prefer not to die here if it's all the same to you two fools. I do just really like that scene because I just like any scene where there's a group of characters just like, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that one's really good. The voice acting on that one's very strong. Uh... <laughs> Do you kind of just wish that was an animated scene? I just want to see him all standing back to back fighting zombies. Well, he's running away full tilt. All right, so this is going to be my final team on Alm's side. Uh, again, unless you're playing Gaiden, you don't have to worry about 
your team going into this too much. However, you do have to be wary of your turn wheel uses. I don't think it's a spoiler to say that by the end of this we'll be fighting the final boss, and you are going to want all of your retries for that one, even when there are other points where you could really use retries. Whatever lies at the end of these corridors possesses a frightful aura. It sets the hairs on the back of my neck on end. The lord of this temple awaits, and here I am. Terrified of him. I mean, it is God. That's kind of fair. Hey, the God of War is at the end of this temple. Yeah, I'd, I'd be pretty scared too. He knows a few things about fighting. I'm genuinely shocked that you're not bringing my suit. <laughs> I can't be bothered with the last second. <laughs> Gold Knight. But the supports! All has to reconnect with his grandfather. His supports are written... In a way that makes the most sense if they're in this final dungeon. That voice. Clive. Fernand. God. Also, yeah, I thought this scene already happened. <laughs> I thought we already killed Fernand. I have none to blame for this but myself. Such trivialities matter not at this point. But you. You made it here. Then you truly intend to slay Duma. We do. For it was Emperor Rudolph's dying request. Also because we should, and that's actually the more important part, because Rudolph sucks and we all hate him. Duma is mad? Oh yes. Oh he's pissed. God no longer. Merely an incarnation of the lust for power. You there. Bomb. Uh, yeah? That's <laughs> a man's dying off. Well, it's for dad, no one gives a shit. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I believe there is a miscommunication with Mr. McCarley about the inflection of that line. But I beg it of you regardless. You're the only one who can end this. Let no one else be tainted by his madness. Let this tragedy end. I will. I swear, I will lay Duma to rest. I mean, I was already going to do that, but, you know, I guess I'll do it for you too. I will kill him, but respectfully. That's a thing you can do. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? You can't say that phrase. Begging boons of you. Not in the least. I still count myself among your friends. You always were too nice for your own good. I do like how they didn't make a new portrait for Fernand, so he looks so fucking smug as he's dying, and you have the much sadder portrait up there. I do wish they just put like blood splatters on him, <laughs> so he's just smugly smiling while covered in blood, or as he would call it, victory wine. If the world is rotten, then who permitted it to be so? It's me, and no one else. I took anger better aimed at myself, and turned it on the defenseless masses. Nah, man, I wish I realized this like two months ago. Goddamn, that sure would have been useful. <laughs> You are already dying. Man, getting a hole punched through my gut by a fire ghost uh, really puts things in perspective. I'm glad I got to see you one last time. You were right. You chose the right king. You always were the friend I was proudest to. Well, I mean, the competition was slay, but oh, oh god, Fernand, why? Fernand, no, don't do this. Look at me, Fernand. Fernand! I simply won't accept this, Fernand. Quit being dead. You wake up this instant. We're all returning to Sophia together. Fernand? Fernand, say something. He's gone, Claire. He's gone. No. Oh, you know, I've seen scenes in fiction where characters mourn for a character that was just a real piece of shit whenever they were alive and you can make it work mm -hmm. i i feel this one's okay i think uh, like fernand's overall arc is actually pretty good i do like the scene it's just he's not really involved with the plot in a meaningful way 
Yeah, they just sort of plopped him in. He also, like, part of this is because we, of the way we record this, but he was out of the plot for so long I thought he already died. <laughs> I will keep mentioning that. Um, this scene works well. It's mostly just, like, Fernand's character in general that needs some slight reworking. Yeah. Which, uh, from what I know about video games, uh, revisions of video games are fucking nightmares, so it doesn't surprise me that it wasn't reworked. Mm hmm. Uh, they really could have used some more time of him, of like, not being a dick, which I guess they're throwing in uh, for this memory prism. But, I don't know. I think if you could still see, like, some amount of goodness in him when he was on the enemy side, it might have been slightly better. Like, he, he's mostly just there to be contrary to Clive at the start, and then that leads him to not be in the group anymore, and then he just sits on his hands for a bit and just goes, Ah, damn, Burkut. Oh, man, you hate commoners too? Nice, I hate them so much. But he never really has a moment of like, Well, actually, you don't hate them that much up until right now. The typical way to endear an audience to a character like this is to have him see commoners as, like, people beneath him, but, like, worthy and deserving of his help and respect and, like, shepherding. And they couldn't do that for him, so they replaced it with nothing. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, the actual payoff of his character is that he realizes... No, yeah, I was blaming everybody but myself, and, like, I couldn't handle the innate cruelty of the system in this world that brought everything to the death of his family. So, like, technically speaking, yeah, the way to actually show him being wrong in that case is him being wrong extremely <laughs> right at the start. And it, it's not really endearing. Yeah. The DLC did a slightly better job because he gets to talk about his family while they're still alive. Yeah. We should have had more memory prisms of him talking about his family just throughout the game. Before his death. <laughs> serve our people. The nobles of Sophia have a duty to her small folk. On that, we agree. King or no, it's the kingdom itself that is most worth protecting. Now, are you going to tell me how things are done around here or not? <laughs> Let me get you settled. Alright, Alm. Alm has judged that scene as well, so... Moving on, we've got a little bit of dungeon uh, before we get two more cutscenes, so... Enemy time. What are we working with here? Well, this doesn't look terrible. First things first, we've actually got a new battle theme. It's a remix rather than anything, like, completely new. Uh, this particular song is Those Who Challenge Gods. So, you know. <laughs> can probably figure out what we're doing by the end of this if you didn't figure it out already. But yeah, it's like reworking. It, I think it sounds pretty good. <laughs> also sounds great sped up. Are you just moving Claire up and seeing that massive red exclamation mark? Like, nope! Oh right, I have to worry about that now. Double lion. But yeah, I do think uh, this particular song adds a, a good sense of urgency. Sounds nice, very dramatic for the finale. Alright, and remove you, hopefully. Yeah, 56 is fine. Alright, so now it's just the wizards. Oh yeah, and of course, um... I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, but purple water is bad. Don't stand in it. It hurts. Oh well, I my! Mean, technically speaking, that is just bits of swamp, so we've seen it before. It just feels weirder when we're in a dungeon and it's just small pools. 
the human brain is weird. It just changes context, and it's like, oh yeah, that's a completely different thing. No, we've seen that obstacle. I see you found our mini swabs, Deliverance. It's real bad in here. There's just so much moisture. We've got mold in here, too. It's what Duma wants. Breathing fucking sucks. On second thought, just kill me. I... God, I hate being down here. Oh, you failed to kill me. This was a cruelty in and of itself. Duma keeps making me eat asbestos. It'll make you stronger. He keeps saying it'll make me fireproof, but that's a fucking lie, too. That's how it works. <laughs> Man, that was too easy. Alright, so, uh, this is a particularly long dungeon, so, uh, a fair few of the shorter fights are just gonna have to go. Uh, but, you know, figured I'd show that one off, cause we got a new song. But that wasn't a particularly, uh, amazing fight. Wasn't too difficult. And here's gargoyles. We know how they work, right? Oh, there's those fuckers, too, so <laughs> we are gonna keep this one in. Cause... Uh, I don't remember if there was a, uh, support in here as well, but there are tougher enemies. <laughs> Fiends are, well, kinda just... I don't want to say they're super difficult, but they're very hardy. Sometimes I forget, uh, because of the way that, like, the, the knight class is viewed in the Fire Emblem series, that, like, sometimes the knight class is, like, Ew, Gargoyler here. Uh, sometimes the night class is just kind of like the big final enemy because they're very imposing and defensive, and that, that is actually pretty effective as endgame enemies go. They might not be dragons, but they're large armored men who don't take much damage from most things. Steer. I probably don't need to steer this clear of them, but I don't have to take damage. That's for the better. The night class is one of those things that just tends to be far more useful to the enemy than to you, because you have to keep moving. The enemy typically doesn't. The enemy can just sit its ass in one place, and you'll have to come to it. Yep. <laughs> you do the work. Damn, Tobin's explosive arrows aren't doing enough. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, switched back to that bow instead of the silver bow. A, because he didn't actually get any uh, skills for it, and I didn't really feel like writing that out. And B, we are going to be fighting a decent amount of fiends here. Claire's Lance, on the other hand, very effective. <laughs> Alright, everybody still seems to be doing fine, even though I do kind of need an excuse to just eat through my inventory. So let's see, what do we got here? Is this cutscene central? God, the walls are just so weird and sticky looking. Okay, yep, cutscene time. That statue. Miller? Oh, hey God, how's it go? Oh, fuck. Okay, so last episode, I said, uh, my least favorite scene in the game is in this one. Uh, people might think it's this one, but it's not this one, actually. This one's gonna be a fairly long scene, and it'll have character decisions that a lot of people disagree with. I don't hate it. I'm so glad. Wait, are you alone? Where are the others? So this is all. Hey, Alm. How's it going? First time meeting you. My name is Jeddah. I must thank you for disposing of Emperor Rudolph. Well then, Jeddah. Enjoy your last moments. 
I'm here to put an end to you and Duma. And the knight. And up dog. Up dog? What is this? Up dog. I forgot because I was too mad. Double life! He's having a good time, and he won't stop at all. What? But then... All this fighting... What was it even for? What were we fighting for? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Richard Epcar. All men on tees. You stand at the pinnacle of your respective kingdom. And your respective kingdom suck dick. To return to the gods' control. Duma's back, He's baby! Of an age of fear and chaos, cradled in Duma's shadow. I am hyped for this! Let that happen. Rejoice on Tees, for you have the honor of serving as its cornerstone. Selica? What is he talking about? I'm sorry, Om. This is the only way. There's no other choice. The girl will offer up her soul to quell the madness in Duma's heart. She does so for the sake of Regal and Sophia's people. Everybody applaud for her before I kill her. Selica, you can't. Tell me he's lying. I'm sorry, Om. Do not think me a monster. I shall grant you the time for a farewell. But be quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm being polite here, <laughs> letting you two have a moment alone. I'm so sorry. But I don't want it to take too long. Come on, I'm not made of time here. Also, it's not a moment alone. I am right here. I I really wish he was in the background of this shot. He's looking mad. I came here knowing what awaited me. What? Back on the island, I had a dream. A dream where something terrible happened to you. You were having this really cool fight with Emperor Rudolph. You were doing like parkour, it was rad. Did that actually happen? Uh, no, he didn't actually attack me. Oh. Well, okay. I guess it was lame and you killed your dad. I couldn't change a thing. I failed to keep you safe, Om. That's not... Silica, none of what's happened is your fault. You're not to blame for any of it. But I won't lose you. I won't let any of you die. I don't want you to fight Duma. I don't want anyone to be hurt or killed. That's my only desire in this life. Selica. Then this is the only means I have of ensuring that comes to pass. So again, Om. I'm sorry. I wish it could have been different. I always have. I wish I could have gone home to the village and lived there with you. Silica, please wait! Nope, your two minutes are up. Om, um, I don't wish to be vulgar, but... Fuck! Uh, what is the proper course of action for us now? Claire, that wasn't even slightly vulgar. Well, I said I wasn't going to be vulgar! Frantise asked us not to. Have we come this far simply to reach an impasse and accept it? Okay, so like, we hate Duma, and we hate Rudolph, but Rudolph asked us to kill Duma, and we like Selica, and she said not to kill Duma. I don't- <laughs> Who do we spite, Alm? My moral calculus is not doing well right now. Are you serious, Tobin? You're just gonna sit around on your butt and let Selica die for us? What? No! I don't want that any more than you do. But what other choice do we have? There's nothing left we can do! <laughs> I'm not giving up. Huh? Alright everyone, I'm taking off my armor. Oil me up, I'm fetting through these bars. Every fiber of my being says this is wrong. So we're going to take down Duma and bring Selica home safe. Sure, that all sounds fine and well. But how do we do that exactly? How do we kill God all? You're no longer just the leader of the Deliverance. You are to be Regal's next Emperor. You must set your personal feelings aside, no matter how difficult it may be. All of Valentia depends on you now. Well, you half of it does. Your decision. Fine. Then I decide to follow the will of the previous Emperor, Rudolph. But he was dumb as hell. <laughs> I'm also going to give up my son. <laughs> 
All of you fought this far because you hold some kind of hope for the world. It's man's individual hopes and fears that shape the world, that drive it. And that's how it should be. I truly believe that. Should we let the world crumble on a god's whim? Or his absence? You're right, of course. But... I don't want to lose anyone else I care about. I don't want to see anyone else lost because of Duma. <laughs> yeah, I've had to suffer exactly one death of somebody we knew, and that was Fernand, and, you know, he was kind of middle of the road. But we don't want anybody we really like dying. You have to stop this now. Before it becomes an actual problem. <laughs> as well as anyone that there will be losses along the way. I think I've learned that much by now. But when I think of the next thousand years, I don't want this. I want to leave behind a world where we shape our lives by our own hands. Oh no, I'm a libertarian. ...and fix them as many times as necessary. That's a world worthy of a future. I imagine a world without public roads. I have the determination to see it through. I'll not object. I am yours to command, Your Excellency. Count me in. I'm not living my life bowing to Duma and his little. <laughs> I'm not little. I'll have you know I'm very tall and very smart. I'm just not sure. I'll quit your whining and hop on board already. <laughs> when all else fails, just bully Tobin. I would, but I have little brothers and sisters to think of. I will gladly take up a trowel and work the land with them. Wait, but you're a noble, Lucas. Like I give a shit. Will mean precious little in the world ahead of us. Myself, I refuse to be controlled by Duma or go hungry. I'm going to have my cake and eat it. Then I shall do just that. And you won't do it alone. In truth, I've always been curious about farming. Oh, I get to be a peasant. How quaint! Everybody who's ever actually farmed is like, no, no, don't do it. It sucks. Me sewing. Oh, this is great. Me reaping. You know, I also like this too. Also, ah, oh, what the fuck do you mean, cow you in? Where you started this? You started an endless cycle, all. All right, I'm gonna get us on the level three hype train. Huh? Mila's statue is glowing. What's going on here? Wasn't she sealed away? She. She's calling me. She's thanking me for all the fruit we sent. Mila is calling to me. We Grease me up, boys. We have to find a way to the altar. Grease me up, boys. <laughs> really insistent on seeing all of them get greased up, huh? All right, so <laughs> gotta find Grease first. All right, so that particular scene, a lot of people don't like Selica and the choices she makes uh, in this game. Gonna stab a ghost. It's three dread fighters. Skipping this one. You know what it looks like. It's not easy, but you know what three dread fighters looks like. But yeah. So, Selka is the character who kind of has to job a bit at the end. <laughs> but it is in large part because. Her whole ideal throughout uh, the game is, well, we can just fix society by asking God, hey, fix your shit, please. You you built this world, keep going. Uh, except now we're at the point where that is literally impossible. Uh, even if Mila weren't stabbed in the head and turned to stone, uh, she's also going mad. So at some point, that's just going to go south no matter what. But, at this point, uh, Selica's, uh, pretty much driven by depression, because everything's fallen apart around her. Like, Mila's a statue, and the best she can do is just feed Duma and hope that he isn't insane for long enough for somebody else to find a solution and for all of her friends to not die. Now, of course, ah, again, the big problem with 
Celica's portion of this game is the fact that Jetta's very obviously evil, which we will see right now in this cutscene that happens when you room change. It is time, Antiz. Lord Duma is waiting. Not yet. Not before you've released Mila. That was the arrangement. I'm afraid that what you ask is beyond my ability. Mila has sealed Falchion herself. We mortals have no say in the matter. Yeah, she stabbed herself in the head. To me. If you are displeased, Princess, I suggest you point your ire at Mila. No, but you lied to me, though. You don't know how deal-making works, do you? Oh, that also seems bad. Easily. Seat your lamentations and come along, girl. I'll send the boy to you shortly. That I can promise. No, not home. You swore to leave him alone. Hey, have you ever watched Star Wars? <laughs> can you think of what quote I'm thinking of right now? Can Bet you can. Rejoice, Lord Duma. I have brought the brand bearer who threatens your order. You can close her account now. She'll lose so many followers! Even if she makes a new account, she won't get them back! Oh man, I'm almost pissed at this. I've been waiting years to say this. Silence, Brand! All right, get him, Duma. Making <laughs> spirit bombing the eye. <laughs> People of Earth, give me your fucked up and evil energy. <laughs> Such potent energy. How many takes do you think that ooh took? I think he got it first try. God, Jetta Delighted is just as good as him saying sluice. To you presently. On tease, I declare you reborn as Duma's faithful pawn. That's right, you don't even get to be a good chess piece. Now fuck off, I hate you. And, rot with below. and you fuck off, and you fuck off, and... Alright, cool. Today is a good day for Jetta. Alright, so yeah, that seemed bad. <laughs> so yeah, um... On one hand, Richard Epcar is absolutely delightful as Jetta, and I do love him just being unflinchingly evil, but also does kind of weaken Selka's character a little bit when he is very, very obviously <laughs> evil. You could probably guess by that man's actions that he is a liar. Though, I guess, up until these promises, he was mostly telling the truth. The gods are going mad. He just lied about him wanting uh, Duma to not go crazy. Because, in fact, he's absolutely fine with that. The gods are going mad. I'm gonna leave out the hell yeah from that statement, and no one will be the wiser. Greetings, Delthea. I was hoping we could speak a little more about Luthea. Oh, gods, what now? I was just thinking how you were exactly right about him. Gifted Major, no. He clearly inhabits his own bizarre little reality. I talked to him once off screen, it was terrible. He's just the worst person I know. Oh, yes. In fact, I'm going to kill him after this conversation is over. Here I go. Don't call Clive a hot stallion. <laughs> Please, God, no. I feel like your crush should be a little more innocent than that, Delphia. Got him! You love your brother! Everybody's confused as they just suddenly hear an air horn go off. 
Your next words will be, my brother isn't that bad. Better, you and I. We have so much in common. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really big on mind games. <laughs> but I Well, too bad. So you just got cleared. Right. You really just fucking said I like your funny words, Pegasus girl. Splendid. Alright, so a few things. Uh, first off... This game changes a lot of the context of Celica sacrificing herself uh, from Gaiden, because in Gaiden, the big reason she sacrificed herself was because Alm was trapped in the dragon pit. It was explicitly about that. Jetta just said, Hey, I'm Jetta. We're just meeting for the second time. You fought me out in the swamp. By the way, Alm's in the dragon zone. <laughs> you you want to uh, sacrifice yourself to Duma? I'll let him out. And then, yeah, uh, she's tossed into the final dungeon at that point. Now, they did remove some import from all being trapped in dragon hell. I don't know if that's because they had expanded that scene already and just thought, hey, we're not left with much. But that's probably it. I can't imagine they went, Oh, let's get rid of the, the dragon pits. <laughs> We're going into Fire Emblem Echoes explicitly to change that and nothing else. <laughs> that is our, the only thing that was wrong with Gaiden. Yeah, it was probably, let's have a scene where Alm and Sela can talk right before she sacrifices herself. Wait, Alm can't do that because it's in the dragon pit. Well, we'll shuffle that around. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like, and I also think it gives more importance to, like, Selica's own beliefs, uh, rather than just, hey, Alm's in the dragon pit, it's, hey, everything you've believed in, um, yeah, that's all going down the toilet, so, uh, do you have ever anything left? Uh, just your, uh, self-sacrificing nature? Cool. <laughs> And then, as it turns out, uh, no, that's not helping either, because, again, I cannot stress this enough, Jetta is such a liar. <laughs> Will not stop lying. But yeah, like, uh, I think a lot of people just see Selka acting completely in despair, and just go, Pfft, well, why didn't she just, uh, kick Jetta off a cliff and kill Duma herself? Um... Uh, I, I, that's what I would do. Rip to Celica, but I'm different. <laughs> I get it as not the optimal character choice, and... That doesn't always come off as great, and it is incorrect overall. And Alm's the one who's in the right, because his... His whole standpoint is... Gods ain't gonna save us. So... Humans will. But yeah... <laughs> Zelika kind of takes the brunt of that, unfortunately. Uh, if it isn't my least favorite criticism, why isn't this character completely perfect in every way? Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I'm going to be honest, I think having the other characters interact in that scene as well also really helps because part of it could just be like... Maybe you, the player, are, you know, not super jazzed about gods and their place in the world. You know, I, I cannot claim to know the religion of every single person playing this, but, you know, me being agnostic, uh, the concept of, well, human beings should just take care of human beings uh, and their problems, you know, that just makes sense because this continent was not literally founded by two gods. <laughs> It's not a problem I normally have to deal with. Uh, but, you know, in-universe, uh, this is kind of a big deal. God being dead and turned to stone. Not not good. Very bad. Like, people don't even know how they're going to effectively plow the fields anymore if God's not actively making the dirt good or whatever. Whatever the problem there is. <laughs> like, we know the land is still tillable because people have had to do it, but like, I, I guess Mila just made that super easy. You get dirt plus, it's better than normal dirt. I feel the mother's protection. Hey, I think I got 
But yeah, just having characters actually- Oh! Deltia got Ragnarok, very nice. Uh, but yeah, having characters actively just sit there and go, We're kind of fucked, right? <laughs> uh, kind of helps take a little bit of pressure off Celica. It's not just her making a wrong decision in a vacuum. It's her at her wit's end. And she's just in a worse position than uh, everybody else is. Because everybody else can rally behind Alm, who has always been all about that uh, humans rule humans thing. Alm has always been willing to kill God with his own bare hands. Mm hmm. It's just now he actually has the chance to. The only thing that I want to say about Celica is that the issue that I have with the way Celica is written for that scene is that it is a systemic issue in that ostensibly the most important female character in this game now exists to die for the sake of the male character and everyone else, but mainly the male character, especially in original Gaiden. Uh, but that's a systemic issue, so I try not to get too mad at specific instances of it unless it's really, really bad. And I don't think this is really, really bad. It's only a little bad. You may recall me mentioning the pilgrimage my mother and I went on. Well, as it turns out, the pilgrimage was in Regal. This is because my mother was a cleric of the Duma faithful. It was only later that she crossed to Sophia and left me with the Priory. It was sudden, and I never learned why. She simply vanished from my life. But another mother rescued me when I was at my lowest. No, wait, I've read Coraline. Don't, don't fall for it! Now I will Silk just brings in a chair, turns it around, sits down on it. Let me tell you about the Mother Milla. God! <laughs> Fucking youth pastor, Silk. Clive and I became close after enlisting in the Knights of Zofia. Okay, cool. Also, hi, Ms. Milla. That's how most people start their conversations is with hi. <laughs> it's just one of those things that will like if you're easily bothered it will ruin a lot of fiction for you just like next time you watch a scene where somebody picks up the phone check to see if they sell, say hello or goodbye when the two of us are alone he can be quite well that is none of your concern that was a close one matilda you almost overshared about your sex life again um, can i help you i seem down yes well i suppose i have been ruminating a bit it's just, what if Zeke's memory somehow comes back? Does that mean I have to hit him over the head so he forgets again? Is this just my life now? Of course, it would only be right if he returned to her in such a case. You know, I don't get to say this very often about male characters, but he does have two hands. What the gods must think of a sinful servant like me. All right, so we're going to cut here uh, because this is the start of the uh, next portion, which would have had to happen anyway because we're about to come up to a tough fight. One of the points that will really tempt you into using a turn wheel. Uh, however, uh, I'm dumb as hell because I must have tossed out my original version of that first part of the recording because after recording it, I couldn't find it at, after like a week. So that was fun. I had to record that entire first segment again. Yes, the very, very cutscene heavy first segment. <laughs> For the viewers at home, this recording has been delayed three weeks. <laughs> well, no, not this one. Like, I'm done with the game, uh, in terms of recording. Oh, okay. Okay. I meant this audio recording. I think it's only- I think we only skipped last week. Oh. Oh, that's right, it's the uploads that have been skipping for multiple weeks. Mm -hmm. The passage of time is a bastard. I get you there. Alright, so, uh, I think I'm done talking about Celica. I think we're also to the next big portion, which is good because I want to talk about this dungeon in Original Gaiden. Because that's actually pretty interesting. However, I believe we're almost to a certain chamber. Yep, this is looking familiar. I've been on this walk a few times. There. It's him. Fire! Oh, Burkut.
You kept me waiting, Ohm. Or should I say, Your Excellency? Perhaps Emperor Rudolph II of Regal? Burkut, listen to... Tell me, how does it feel to possess both Sophia and Regal? I imagine it's wonderful. Though it's a sensation I'll never know. <laughs> Must be nice ruling two whole countries. Wish that were me. Gonna want to rule the world so badly, but no. You had to turn out to actually be pretty cool and good. How dare you. Do they? Do they? <laughs> Nobody talked about Burkut. Like, some women said thought he was hot, but like that's the extent of it. Like people talked about how cool Zeke was, but like Burkut was just ah dang he's dreamy. Kind of assuming that like because he's in power here, people trust and respect him. But like this is the fucked up like Sparta ass country. Like <laughs> most people probably despise the nobility. And he did lose twice, so like, who's gonna happy. like him? Strength isn't lent; it's taken. Pride from the grip of your dead foes. <sighs> Not much of a fail son anymore, now, am I? What's about? Oh, Burkut has taken Endula's power. He's no longer the man we knew. I can't believe Burkut somehow managed to get worse. Behold, my wife. That girl is on fire. I'm here to push the limits of the T rating arm. Did you at least get consent first? Everyone was making fun of me. Everybody betray me. I'm fed up with this world. The only thing in the world a man can rely on is his own strength. Years of... Are you accusing my father of betraying you? You're wrong. He loved you. Um, you knew him for five seconds, and he tried to kill you for all five of those seconds. Okay, but everybody else is saying that Rudolph from Burkut, so like... I don't think Alma's wrong here. I have no way of proving this, but I guess he probably loved you? You weren't even married and you sacrificed your wife to Duma? Okay, so... This fight is a bastard. Yeah, see all those things that uh, Renee <laughs> has? Yeah, so she can summon witches, she can use magic without getting damaged. Uh, got, he's got a good lance. Hey, you know what the game doesn't mention? They've got supports. They are stronger by standing next to one another. So, killing one or, an, or the other on their own is hard enough. Uh, but they're together for the fight, which means they are nigh invulnerable. <laughs> So like this initial bit, this is also a very good formation, which I would fear and respect normally. Uh, but as a lead up to the boss, which is actually also fairly tough. Uh, yeah, no, this is not an easy fight in the slightest. So like I said, um, I was absolutely not going to finish this episode in one segment. Um... Unfortunate that it turned out the way it did and I had to redo the first bit, but, <laughs> you know, sometimes it be like that. Sometimes you're dumb. Ah, uh, but yeah, no, this took me a few tries. Thankfully, though, I did remember Invoke existed and that it's highly useful. It's very good to have meat shield... meat shields, or ghost shields, as it were. Also, yes, by this point, they are dread fighters. 
your ghosts do power up with you. Which is not normally a thing I notice, because usually I don't use Invoke. And honestly, they are pretty tough. They're soaking some pretty good damage. And quite frankly, at this point, I don't care about experience as much. I mean, do I need levels? Yeah, sure. I would like to show off the, uh, overclasses. But at this juncture, I don't care as much. <laughs> Now, now the hard part. Well, never mind. Yeah, so I don't have a lot of mages, though, is the thing. So, like, that guy, yeah, I can take out that fiend with magic. Uh, which is good, because these guys don't particularly go down to magic, so... Uh, divert Delphia to what she can actually do. Except now I have a weird party split. <laughs> So yeah, this team is mostly physical fighters, which helps more against uh, dread fighters than mages would. But they're still not easy. We have gone over this before, but uh, what is the answer to dread fighters supposed to be? Because they resist the mages, but they're also, like, pretty beefy physically, so other physical units aren't the best for taking them out. The solution to dread fighters is lay down and die. <laughs> uh, no. Honestly, it is kind of other dread fighters, because, like, they're just very good all-around classes. Because uh, they're fairly fast, they hit decently. Uh, your own Dread Fighters probably hit better than the enemy Dread Fighters. Though speed is always a variance on characters. Gray's own speed is kind of evading me right now. But yeah, no, they are, strangely enough, also very, very tough. Like, I talked up the Fiends earlier, but I did just kind of nuke one with Delthea. And other than Double Lion, I don't really have that answer for any <laughs> other character. Damn, you got crit by a ghost. Sucks for you, buddy. These ghost dread fires are just obliterating these witches. Like, I... <laughs> these witches are not tactically useful. I mean, to be fair, they are kind of her own version of Invoke. But also, that just means that my meat shields are better than her meat shields. Okay, so, uh, another thing that I did not, uh, actually voice, but you might have noticed, uh, when I was looking over Renea's abilities, uh, she does have the ability to just kidnap you. Uh, if you are in her range, uh, she can just use a spell to just yoink a character right by her, uh, at which point, uh, she and Burkut will just stomp your ass. <laughs> Renea just points to somebody from across the field and goes, that person. I don't like their vibes. Get them, babe. You. You took everything You, Tobin! <laughs> I will kill you, Tobin! Well, I, I don't think I've ever spoken to you. That damage, of course, will not last. I should also mention, yeah, no, Great Big Pillar of Fire will also just heal them. Thankfully, it doesn't also do damage to you, because then this battle would be even more of a pain. Recruit Spear, um, Creamhild, I, I really don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, but I noticed that as a German name, so I wondered if it means anything. So, it is a reference to a character in, um, Germanic folklore, who is the sister of the, uh, a, a trio of Berg 
Kings of Burgundy. Uh, but it is derived from old German names, or old German words, Grimo, which means mask, and Hilt, which means battle. So his spear is named Mask Battle. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, Mask Battle, get down! I challenge you to a mask fight, um, I don't even know what that means! Alright, so here's the hard part. Everything. <laughs> uh, I think going for Renea first is the better option. Uh, just because she's slightly easier to kill. Now, she does have a ring, which theoretically could keep her at 1 HP if you were to do enough damage to her. Good news, however, uh, the chance of that is based on luck, and she doesn't have any. Alright, fuck this guy! Nice! Unfortunately, Berkut does not have any, uh, voice lines for his crits. <laughs> Alright, just continue blowing her up, and now... Oh god, that hit rate is abysmal. That was that even worse! Abysmal. <laughs> Gray, you're making it worse somehow! Gray, stop heckling Tobin! You're supposed to have a support together. I just like the oh, idea. I had any, uh, any skills to use to up my hit rate. I just like the idea of Vercruz saying, You took everything from me, Tobin, and Tobin going, like, Well, if he's accusing me of it, I better actually do it! Alright, fine, I'll kill your fucking wife with a 26% hit chance. What do you think of that? <laughs> Woo, level up! <laughs> it wasn't even worth it! I mean, he needed the skill, clearly. <laughs> I killed your wife for one point of skill, Burkut. <laughs> okay, so now Burkut is slightly more fightable. Okay, what is his greatest enemy, Tobin, going to fight him? Alright, so none of us are in range, though, and now that, uh, Renea can't just teleport us over so that he can beat the shit out of us, uh, I'm just gonna stand close to him without going in there. You can get him, ghost. You can do it, I believe in you. I somehow believe in you more. I believe in you less. Okay, yeah, you're... No longer do I believe in you. Get out of here. Alright, well, thankfully he can't counter from over here. Thank you, Majoring. Anyways, this spell is named after, like, a war that kills all of the Norse gods and it does 15 damage. <laughs> This ends a religion, and it barely touches Vercut. He's very strong. Less strong without his flaming ghost wife, but strong nonetheless. Alright, get his ass for one damage, Tobin. The fact that Tobin's arrows explode just makes everything he does so much funnier. Alright, double lion. Did not crit, unfortunately. Alright, well, would have been good to be able to kill him with that, but, um... Hmm... Hmm... Alright, well... What if, Burkut, I said you needed Jesus? Would you believe me? Alright, Silk, you got this! So be it. 
Grog. Oh no, I thought Tobin was my worst enemy, but it was Silk all along. I wasn't even close to leveling up, Berkut, and you weren't enough EXP. And she puts away her Glock. You really did have Silk just go, I have a healer, but... Um, why are you sad about this? He sucked so bad. Nor do I want for one. Now stop talking and finish this. End me. And you can stand alone as inheritor of Raquel's royal blood. I never I know we're both gay, so we have no qualms with just abandoning blood family members that don't care about us, but not everyone is like that. I mean I get that, but like, I don't know. Uh I'll never having experienced that, I feel like he'd be fine with found family. Anyway, I... remember how I said one of the scenes fucking sucks? I hate this scene so fucking much. Yeah, so I'm not talking Fuck about this. it. I'm still talking about what I'll say. I really. am. <laughs> Fuck this shit. Fuck off. This game did such a good job of making Burkut a whiny bastard throughout this entire game. It was a very good fail, son. And then you just get this, where where the dead wife that he sacrificed to Satan comes down from the heavens is, a, is just like, Oh, don't worry, Burkut. It's fine. Let's be happy together. Fuck off. Whose OC was this? I want names. I'm about to say an incomprehensible sentence because I don't want to really spoil Common Rider Gaim. This must be what characters who or what people who don't like the redemption character in Gaim feel like when they watch Gaim. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> that isn't as blatant as this. I don't feel. No, I like that character in Gaim. I like his redemption. It works because he's like 15. <laughs> mm hmm. He's 15, and it's not quite a wife coming down from heaven to pat me on my cheek and call me a special boy. Do a much better job of showing how much the system is to blame. If it were for capitalism, he would have done anything bad to begin with. Also, that that's the reason I don't like Alm's whole thing about Blood Family. He's just like, oh, I'm going to be all alone. Alm, what about your Ram Village friends? You're not. You're not going to be alone. But, like, I just wanted to say, um, a person not having any blood family members might make them want blood family members more. <laughs> That's fair, but they suck. <laughs> like, I, I get the wanting of these things, but, like, one guy started a war so that he would die and you would kill Satan for him. The other one's just Burkut, who just acts like that. <laughs> yeah, this is just the perils of having old people write stories. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that, like, no, you have to establish why the character thinks this way. Because not everybody else does, and not everybody's gonna identify with this. Anyways, we got a cool ring. Mm-hmm. Like, <sighs> there's gonna be another fucking uh, memory prism after this. We'll see me actually collecting it in the next episode, but I'm showing it here because... Oh, I did actually collect it now, I guess. <laughs> You're just seething in anger. So yeah, uh, just, like, <sighs> I understand the want of Blood Family, I, un I understand the wanting of that, but like, having Alm just sob over the death of Burkut, who has never been good or kind to him or anybody, as far as he can tell, like, he hasn't even seen the Renea scenes himself, so like, he hasn't seen the, the quote-unquote soft side of Burkut. He just knows the guy who fucking sucks. Why would he care? Yeah. There are better cousins, Alm. You are mistaken, my lady. You were invited here. You have the right to carry yourself as anyone else. See, this is why you should have brought Myson to make Alm look even worse. <laughs> oh god, I don't have family. Wow, thanks, Alm. I don't know why I've decided to be harsh. the fucking number one Bison fanboy. I'm just baffled you're just gonna completely ignore a character. I mean, like, look, usually I'll try to show off characters, but, like, I can't be bothered for the final dungeon. You think I could have a character I've not <laughs> had much uh, time with for the Burkut battle? No, I need Matilda there instead. I need Matilda and Zeke both. It's 
Renea, my lord. Renea. A lovely name. Renea. May I have the next dance? Wow, look, he's so kind. He's dancing with her. He's gonna sacrifice herself in like, how how many years uh, is this before the events of the game? This is like two years before he's gonna sacrifice her to Satan. Hey, do you think you're gonna get a comment that's like, oh, so it's okay when Celica sacrifices herself, but when Renea sacrificed, it's a problem? As a fallen Celica user when I was playing Fire Emblem Heroes, no, it is in fact not a problem. Celica gets sacrificed. She gets a very high attack bonus. To dance with you, my lord. Shall we? My lady.